break looking strong and who comes back from the break maybe a little rusty and gale force esports has been one of the strongest teams to come back from the break along with tempo storm let's see if this map can change some things though as we head back in to the battleground pool of hgc gale force esports picking tomb i don't know if i have ever seen them pick tomb before they're mixing things up you know gale force has put in the work and it's showing here for part number two tomb of the spider queen I, I just can't help but feel like we're going to see like another crazy strategy out from them. You know, that's all I expect for some reason. I don't know why it's not it's not a part of their history or anything. You can tell that they're trying to learn and expand their approach to the game. And I feel like now pulling into a map that's less common for them is again. I mean, Superstars is a perfect team to test the waters on. If you feel like you're ahead at all and like you weren't afraid of showing a strategy and testing it out, like how good is this? We've been running it. Superstars is a perfect team to be like right in the middle of like it will work if it's if it's decent it should su be successful but if it's not they're good enough to where they just be like no what was that just get out of here especially now that they're up two games in the series yeah, so there's there's enough of a buffer you just be like we want to try that tomb strategy and be like all right we're picking tomb and you just go it also may be a throw off for Superstars too because obviously the last game Superstars knew what draft was coming they just didn't quite execute in a way to be able to stop it but the difference is now like I said I don't know if I've ever seen Gale Force pick Tomb neither of these teams played Tomb last week so it just might be another way of trying to make sure that Superstars can't start to figure Gale Force out in any way going to Zarya do we see the Vala pick up here for Gale Force to be able to rid of that Vala duo. Otherwise, you can expect Superstars is going to work into some form of Zarya, Ario, plus the battery. It's been a go-to strategy for them and North America in all of Part 1. Still big in Korea and China, even. Uh, having that kind of trifecta of heroes. What else can we expect out of them with the Malfurion picked up? Most Lucio. North American teams haven't. Most haven't this I, high. I think Gale Force will though. I, they've been one of the teams playing Lucio the most. Yeah, which makes me excited. It's just this is a perfect example of like how good is Lucio, right? Even with a mouth band that high up, a lot of the teams so far in HGC and North America have let it go through and double support right out the gates, denying. Whoa. Denying the Ariel Zarya strategy by just removing both. Those two together also yeah are one of the most terrifying but this is not the map to do that if <laughs> if gale force esports falls far enough behind there is not like they they could fall so far behind that they don't have enough macro like you can get away with the double warrior double support strategy on maps where you have to fight around the objective and the objective is won through the fighting uh, but most of the time on Tomb, it's not the case. It's way more about skirmishing and pressure outward, which Double Support and Double Warrior both struggle into. It's like one of the... I want to say it's one of the worst maps to be able to run this, because if they pull ahead, they can zone off of the turn in so easy. Like, it's just like, well, that's game, when you get too big of an advantage in that sense. So, but if both teams don't make colossal mistakes and heavy emphasis is put on the macro game, like uh, even a Gul'dan, there you go, rotation coming out from Superstars here, that is... Again, them making changes to be able to deal with, you know, the map and what their opponents are busting out, and they could it would pay off better even this game than the last one. Because the last one, I mean, let's be honest here, that is a absurdly hard strategy to understand. Double warrior, double support isn't. You just don't win the fight. Is there any chance that there's not going to be a double warrior? It is possible. Uh, because of again the la the emphasis on to we then are committing too much into team fighting, not enough into wave clear. And it makes more sense to move into a double backline solo warrior. Yeah, in which case Superstars may have sniffed this out already, getting two backliners. They could ban another one and try to deny as many backliners that would fit really well with this strategy. But Gale Force Esports ran double support, double warrior on Infernal Shrines. Again, that's where everyone is fighting together all at the same place. There's the two turn-in points here. Yeah, like Infernal and Sky Temple are two maps where I would say that kind of strategy is like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you know? What else are you going to do? Split push and, like, maybe get a fort, like, on both of those maps? Uh, it, late game, late game, Infernal Shrines works way different than Sky, but for the most part, yeah, those are the go-to maps for that. Skirmishing Towers is another one. Love this. Where you can get away with it. Yeah, so it bans out the Vala. The Gul'dan is already picked up. And that only leaves, like, Lunara out of those, you know, big high-number damage dealers... 
uh, that, you know, Superstars, or excuse me, that Gale Force won. So Superstars here with their new drafters. We heard Sray talking about having Hosi move over the drafting, which Sray has drafted on, I think, every team he's played on, period. So the fact that they, you know, they're mixing things up and changing that role, maybe showing a bit here in this draft. It makes me happy too because we've talked about the three core members of Superstars who have been together for so long, Sray, Faye, and Iacona. And we wondered where the value would be in bringing in Hosty and Goku. So now we're seeing it with Hosty. He's flexible. Uh, he's been playing, flexing into whatever he needs to, sometimes a third warrior, sometimes a range, now drafting too. And he does pay attention to a lot of regions to be able to offer that, Sray said, even more than himself. And then Goku, we've already seen, right? The playmaking that he brings in is, it's very good, especially in synergized in synchrony with uh, Sray. So now Superstars, they've got to pick up their support. And if they want to go with another Warrior, now is going to be the time with all the supports of already receiving a lot of focus. I'm just laughing at the holiday oh. lights of Lunara. They keep changing. I actually didn't know that on the skin. That's actually pretty neat. The celebration. Does it go all the season colors? No, nah, they're kind of they're kind of mixed up. I was excited for a moment if they just cycled through the seasons. Too good. I guess it is a Christmas skin, so it's a little unfair to make it all seasonally. But I don't know. I just all I think of when I see her in default. Winter pins. Veil. Yeah, Winter Veil. Last two picks. Karzim one. Oh man, I thought for sure it would be the Karzim into a Lunara. Kona. Into a Lunara though? Man, I would have taken that over the Rhaegar all day. Murden pick up here with all the Warriors focused on. Surprise that wasn't an Arthas, but showing they don't want the Arthas into the style of composition. Do we see Gale Force look to pick it up, committing the double support, double Warrior, or in fact, another backline? Look at Tychus, he's still up. I, I ideally from Superstars would have liked to see Karzim Tyrael, I think, in that rotation. Would have been 10 out of 10 for me. Mm -hmm. The team fighting is still good enough and cross supporting on everything to where it's insanely terrifying to deal with in fights. Just enough when it comes to macro play with the Gul'dan, the Zarya, um, and then having Tyrael be a solid 1v1er. Yeah, but Rhaegar is a 12 out of 10 doggo. He is. And you know? he's a favorite of Iacona's. <laughs> Aqua Face too, but Iacona has been playing him for forever. All right, we're doing it. We're in there. Double support, double warrior in game number three for Gale Force Esports. So Superstars has to get a turn in, like two turn in level lead right now is like what they need. They can get away with it into the comp that we see GFE draft because it is so little wave clear. It has only got Lunara. She doesn't have very good wave clear on her own, uh, but they're scary to fight into. So avoid that fight. Look to just wave clear, wave clear, wave clear, get the first turn in, abuse the Zarya Gul'dan factor, siege up, take half a fort, stack the next one, fort and a half after that. And when they get that big of a lead, they should be far enough ahead that the double warrior double support is not impossible to fight into. But if that works the other way, and Gale Force is the team to get even a level ahead after the first turn in, I really think that they are just that much better than Superstars mixed with having such an insanely forgiving composition that if they won the macro game early on in a world where there's no way they should, suddenly this game gets really out of control really fast and it doesn't look close. Yeah, whoever is soloing for Superstars needs to make sure that they're on their A game because Skill Force Esports so far has been able to get a lot of picks yeah. on members of Superstars who have been out and that has enabled them to continue to catapult ahead of Superstars. So if this is dependent on Superstars getting ahead in the early game, hopefully it's something that they feel comfortable with given that before, early in part one, Superstars had to be ahead in the early game where they just couldn't quite function versus their opponents. Yeah, it's this series for drafting has been one of my favorites. I like the Gale Force versus Team 8. Just the way that it's kind of worked out, the thought processes from the teams and the direction they've moved it. But Gale Force, I think, sealed the deal. They've got about two different ways that they're going to approach the game for, all, for the rest of part two. It's whether any team has the answer to stop them. Well, let's waste no more time. Can Superstars stop a Gale Force this game? We'll find out on Tomb the Spider Queen. Man, I am going to be such a sad panda if Superstars doesn't at least put up a really good game here because I think they have 
Gale Force has a lot of what they want, but I don't think it works on the map well enough to justify it. The the Johanna Lunara wave clear is all that they have. I guess they've got Arthas too, which is pretty good, but I think Superstars have the tools here in this game with that Gul'dan uh, to be able to pressure out a lot. It is going to be Q-Build Gul'dan. And Greymane. And Greymane. And to the limit for Zarya. Isn't that yeah, Feel the Heat? Yeah, sorry, Feel the Heat. I always mess those two up, no, the all names. Good. It's just weird when I correct you on a talent. It usually means I'm wrong, so I just don't say <laughs> it. I'm just like, I'm pretty sure that's Feel the Heat. And you're like, oh, well, actually, Feel the Heat was adjusted in Is that my voice? Is that how my voice 3. is? 3.432, <laughs> and it was nerfed by 10% damage, Dredd. You're an idiot. You should know that. Am I the stats calculator for uh, Leroy Jenkins? I mean, you are. You is are. that how you see me? Yeah. <laughs> it, when it comes to the talents, yeah, it's just, you know. Well, thank you. Like, can you tell me the uh, the adjustments in the entire lifespan history of the color of Lunara's nature colon? Go. I can do that. Yeah, hit me with it. Just just so everybody at home can understand why I dropped these dank memes. I don't think they understand how hardcore you are in some talents. You actually want to hear? Hey, give, me, give me the life lessons you've learned through Lunara's nature colon and the colors. Well, it's the same with the one and the seven. They keep switching back and forth, but... At one point, for whatever reason, Nature's Calling switched to being the green talent, which everyone got used to, and we're picking the wrong ones. And then he's just sitting there laughing at me. And then finally, they switched it when they were making the big switch with talents, where they moved everything that could possibly be green that had life steal or healing back. So that's when they switched it. And that was very recent. It was. They decided to give him the old. Talents history with Gilly. The old bamboozle there, Gilly. Anyway, feel the heat. Feel the heat. One of my favorite talents, level one on Zarya. Fan with a big Howling Blast. That damage is not going to get the kill on to Faye, though. Hosey with the shields. Is there any other talent you'd like to give us a lesson over? Because there's been a lot you've been tilted over. In the I just want everybody to realize that you are the world's okay, biggest geek. Okay, so there are some talents that have similar enough names or, like, names that are similar to abilities. Yeah, okay. So there's, like, Earth Shield and Earth and Shields. There's Force of Will, which is both... And a Medivh ability, but then also a level 20 Artanis talent. Um, there are three different shield batteries as of Probius coming out. And there's these weird ones like Crippling Slam, Furious Blow. Like Chogal has one. Butcher has one. Sonya has one. Nobody ever takes them, really. And Samuro has one, too. Any, anything else? What's been happening in this game, Dre? Uh, you know, there's been a lot of rotations. <laughs> Uh, not too much outside of that, really. It's just been very patient. Superstars is committed to the four. They are pulling ahead and winning the four man, as you would kind of expect, but in a weird way, by setting Gul'dan and Greymane as the solos and then running a 3-1-3, kind of babying uh, what happens in between. Um, and Gale Force is just trying to make up for the fact that they picked up a skirmishing composition. Uh, really, you know, they're just trying to stop the bleeding. And so far, it's working out. The fact that only th only 39 gems have been turned in for Superstars. Ideally, they need like a turn in and a half before getting that turn in. Uh, otherwise, Gale Force, because of how gems and experience and time, Equinox is going to be fine. Oh, Icona, Ripperoni, and Pepperoni. That's going to be the first kill of the game. Howling Blast Flank from Fan. And that's enough gems available for e Gale Force Esports to get a turn in if, if Posty lets them get the channel. There was one. Now Akaface and Equinox can zone. Akaface can look for the boops. Crowen also has uh, his detainment strike. Oh, Akka. I thought there might be enough follow up there. But no, they're going to play it more passively here. Arthas, Greymane, and their 1v1 just doing their thing. Nobody pulling too far ahead. Stray is out a bit far. He realizes it. Throws a Stormbolt. Condemned, but no follow up damage behind. Good. Good corruption coming out from Faye, deterring the advancement of Gale Force Esports. But Superstars is not winning the four, the laning phase, second game in a row that they drafted neglect towards the team fight and still were yet to be successful in the laning phase. That was an awesome detainment strike. Almost spelled the end of Goku's life. But with all the damage that Gale Force has consistently put out, Superstars have always had to go back and tap, go back and reset. And this time, it is netted web weavers for Gale Force. And the first web weaver phase, as we talked about, is hugely important in this game. Yeah, it, it is going to set superstars either miles ahead or behind. 
But right now it's looking good. The fact that they have this camp up on mid, Sray took a bit too much damage there. So they won't be able to, you know, kind of step up and rid of it as fast as they would like. But if they can remove these without losing too much... Wow, that corruption. Without losing too much damage there, they should be totally fine. It's just about how fast can they clear of these. And Gale Force is just pretty much forfeiting top. Mid's going to be a pretty safe clear as well. And bottom, that is where we're going to see Gale Force get a front wall and a half. This is risky for Goku. Dives in, jumps out, does not want to get hit by the purple wave of the Web Weaver. Throws out a cocktail. Hesitant to see if anyone is going to rotate in. We uh, Web Weaver in mid has started to do some damage, took out towers, but this has been a nice hold for superstars. They only lost towers. They may be able to get a kill on Fan. Oh. Goku's trying to bait it. There's going to be the shield and the heals. Fan dropping the slow crow in there for the healing. Oh, man, he's in a spot for a detainment strike. Fan goes down, but Goku didn't get punished here as he is still barely alive, dancing over the back lane of Gale Force Esports. This is perfect. Superstars could not have asked for a better position here after that turn in. The fact that they're even in experience, they have, again, enough to get a turn in, but then after the entire turn in ends, they're going to be close to their next one. They can force the 10 spike, get a secondary turn in, and then just be very aggressive. Could be their game. Now to the limit grab. That was a super fast closeout of Pursuit of Flame. Yeah, yeah, it was from Faye. Yeah. Speaking of, just getting a little bit of damage down here. Four, six away. Channel's going to happen by Greymane. But no zoning here from Gale Force. Again, just kind of trying to goaltend it out, make sure that nobody gets a free turn in. Gale Force are getting really close if they can just get the turn in. They have uh, their gym spread out just about everywhere, though, except on Fan. He's a pretty good zoner. Oh, Lunara gets caught, blown up with all the damage that Superstars can deal. And that may be the start of their turn in, especially as they're about to hit heroic abilities. Yeah, this is, the snowball is about to begin. How much can Superstars gain off of this, though? There's going to be the first pick, and then the Web Weavers. Expulsion Zone is going to be casually walked through. But it did force Iron Skin. 10 is now picked up here for Gale Force Esports. Heroics are going to be what you would expect for everyone. No reverse amp. I think that was reverse amp last time. No, it was, it was, it was uh, still, still sound, sound barrier. Okay, we are so yet to see a reverse Aegis. amp in North America. At least so far. Thornwood Vine for Lunara. Still so torn on Thornwood Vine versus the Leaping Strike. I understood it on Braxis, but you definitely want someone who can execute. I guess that maybe comes down to Fan. I he think does have army so that he can be more sustainable in the back. I think the argument is made that, well, if her damage output is high enough and long enough, then it, with a double warrior, double support, you don't need an executioner. You just need your health bars higher than your opponents. Okay. And, and she your opponents enables back that. Off. And then plus you need to be able to make, you know, Crow in that much ter more terrifying in a double support. Sound so barrier. Army of the Dead too. Faye is going to get healed back up. Buys some time with Horrify, but Fan jumps right back on top of two targets, slowing them down, rooting them as well Sray with Howling Blast. Sray is the only one who can't die here. He gets out, so he's going to be fine, just based on his gem count. Yeah. Uh, that's a winning trade uh, right now for Superstars, actually losing that one person. Again, Gale Force knows they have an insanely good teamfight composition, but they have enough for a secondary turn-in, and they're drawing aggro on top. If we can see a turn-in for Superstars, the turn-in's worth more than that boss. I don't say that very often, but this boss is... More of a flashy play than a good one on the side of Superstars. They just have no, or excuse me, Gale Force. They have nothing to do other than try and stack that with the turn in. And the fact that they didn't look for the turn in early, er, early it's very greedy. Superstars now figure it out. And they're going to try and force the turn in. That might have been too little too late, though. They're oh. in the bottom, so nobody but can Grayman, run in so from slow. Gale Force, no. yeah. Oh, my failed fish. Oh, no. Really? That's what I was talking about. They yeah, no, so I slow. saw it, but I just believed. You just believed in the channel oh. time? That's rough. That is rough for superstars. They just didn't get there in time. Yeah, it's just not understanding where your opponents are at that point in time. 
and then putting you in a position where you respond too slow. Okay, so one thing that's important to know is if this was 16 minutes into the game, then that trade-off would be a lot riskier. Um, to, I would want superstars to not turn in. The reason why I want superstars to turn in on this one is just based on the fact that that not only would be a double stack of pressure into a non sieging composition, which you have the boss that they obviously had to respond to, which now leads to the free fort, then they can cycle bottom if they want to, or just keep them busy on mid. Anything can happen at this point in time. Plus a shield hit a few. Sound barrier. Sound barrier two. Sray with avatar and ancestral healing makes it through A-OK. -okay. That won't be the case for Hosty. He has one shield for himself and gets back again. Superstars are hanging in but they're not responding to bottom, which is starting to siege down that final four. Not even final four, there's still the top four too, but more structures. I think this really does show the weakness of Gale Force's draft though. And you know, kind of the criticism I had towards running a double warrior, double support on Tomb is even with two turn-ins, winning most of the fights and a boss, they have netted less structural damage than superstars in this game. Like, when you really do take a step back and you're like, you think about that, you're like, how? Right? But again, it's just they're good at fighting, and that's where it stops. They don't provide anything else to the actual map itself or um, any, any sieging, any part of the mechanic. It's just we win the fight and we get the byproduct, reap the rewards afterwards is what this comp's philosophy is. Well, it's a shield. How, he still has Dwarf Toss. No, but it's Poison. not to the direction of a healer. Uh, oh. yeah. Hosty had shield. Got it in time, so keeping them busy is what Superstars wants to do while mid and top web weavers kind of re wreak havoc. Oh man, cleanse coming out from Iacona. Horrified, gonna be used too. A lot of damage on Equinox, but that double support. So you just keep them busy here. You make sure that Gale Force does not get a free clear to the other lanes because you do not win the fight, but you don't want them to just abuse the fact that they can bully you. So this is perfect. Superstar moves up and then they walk away. And you keep this up. As long as they can disengage, though. Yeah. Horrify's already down. Sound barrier. And Gale Force Esports, with that fort being really low, feel like they might they be able to just up. get a kill. Now they just move up. You legitimately just keep them distracted the entire time. Look at Mikey Dolls looking at me. That's a win. And you try and aggress forward. That is what Superstars has to do. I just feel like now they might be in a position to where they're too late. Well, they, they are going to get the, board, the fort on bottom. They've just made it late game enough to where Gale Force can bank on teamfights carrying them. Typically, you can't do that on Tomb. Like, how often do we see strategies that are banked on, like, I'm looking for the 20, and then you just lose levels 1 through 9 so ridiculously hard that you never have an opportunity to come back. But Gale Force, for the first 12 minutes, between all the control that they've had and only the two picks, have miraculously found themselves in a position where they're still in this game, where I would have expected, you know, superstars to just dominate. Watch Fan. He's looking at a flank right now. Gets spotted from Stray. Nice cleanse. cleanse to stop Faye from getting hit Point from that. that. But the fans too late. He is on everyone from Superstars. Or Superstars are too late. They're going to have to fight in this. Yeah, and they, they realize that. They're looking to turn for now. But again, you don't want to face them whenever they press their R buttons. Goku is the disengage. Sarai goes out. Blessed Shield lands. That explosion zone was awesome. That con <laughs> condemn was huge as well, but no follow-up damage. Sound barrier is going to be used, but not needed, considering the weakness of that fort. So that's a cooldown down. Superstars here is doing a lot of things right. I feel like they're, uh, you know, their first early turn in plays, we talked about it, maybe were questionable, but right now they're taking what has been a staple in North America and Europe right now. This draft, the double warrior, double support, what is considered uh, the one of the top tier strategies and not making it look too good. They're, they're playing it very well against this. Yeah, they have the right amount of going back in, backing off. I really thought they were going to have to fully take the fight, but good expulsion zone from Hosty. And thankfully, that's a low cooldown. So as long as Hosty keeps landing those, it buys time for the team to back out. And as long as Stray is up in the front as that Muradin, he can get slowdowns and then Dwarf Toss out. So they're going to move up here. A lot of damage on the Equinox, stunned out. He pops the Avatar, Ancestral will connect. There's going to be a Horrify splitting off the two members, but Fan it says thank you for the free trip onto your backline. Uses that Frozen Tempest. Hosi is on the retreat. Sray is still just trying to zone everyone away, being pay attention to me. Do not kill my team. 
Oh, did Tame strike as he was trying to run away? But his 13 just hit four members, killing him for 20% there. All right, so the Webweaver's on top and bottom, still full HP. Mid is going to fall, and nobody on the side of Superstar is actually going for a full back here, so they are risking it all here at this mid keep. A lot of damage hits the backliners of Goku is. and Fei. They're going to run back, sound barrier to make sure that Gale Force Esports walk away with the keep from this Web Weaver phase. A keep at least because bottom is pushed up enough that they can make that rotation in and try to get this one too. So this is where Superstars should be able to commit hard enough to not win the fight, but at least zone them off the keep. They don't have everybody here yet. Now they do. Gul'dan should have that damage output. Explosion zone splitting. Fan, they need to focus onto Fan. Oh my gosh, but the Aegis onto the back line. So much damage. Fan is now trying to get the retreat. And man, the double support keeping Mikey Dahl so close to death. And now everyone conveniently full HP. And Superstars wanted to get the kill on Mikey Dahl, but he was pretty far in the back line. Everyone else focusing on Fan who was separated. And they ended up getting no kills. That was their moment, you know. Now they have to face the late game 16, double support, you know, Lucio, what he does at 16. There goes the Horrify, putting them away, not into the team. Sray just decides to, you know what, time's up. I'm going to look to force. He does have Avatar, Warp Toss, Rumble, knocked back, but it does hit. Explosion Zone 2, Equinox is one kill, Lunara a second. Superstars finds an opening. Yeah, a Gale Force here. Even though they got the two keeps, this is a huge moment. This could be a boss in turn in play, but it's one of the boss turn ins where you actually have to no. So they're going to not do this now. I don't think it's likely that they can get both um, on how slow they make this rotation. So you have two different boss plays you can make. You can even make the one where you get the boss, you all turn in directly after, and you can do that if you expect you to be able to get that before your opponents can delay a turn in, which I think they'll get it so slow that you're, it's reasonable for Gale Force to actually be able to delay. No, they're fine. So they did it perfect. They got enough damage to where they can actually get the boss, get the turn-in, and not fear a five versus five fight. Um, or you look to stagger the turn-ins, and then you all start the boss, and then the last person finishes the turn-in at the very end. Um, that's like in an ideal world, the safest play, uh, but very unrealistic to be able to get that opportunity all the time. So Ray's going to pull out, invade this, not giving up anything here. Superstars, they've got the fight in them. At least when it comes to the drafting and the play, from behind here and in this entire series, they aren't giving up, even being down here in the third game. And that might just be the answer to give them one game versus Scale Force. They're working on a keep here in the mid while everyone defends the boss and Webweaver top. That gives Superstars one keep down. Still two down on Superstars base, but thankfully at least the bottom Webweaver is maintaining those catapults so that they can see cheer in top. Oh man, Sray took a lot of damage there. Pops the avatar. He's healing up just fine. Fan dropped the ghouls. He's got so much value onto the back line right now. 20 still out of reach. Everybody's health bars on the side of Superstars is quickly falling to that Lunara poison. There goes the Horrify. They just want that 20, but they're not gonna get it. Sray's gonna be the first to fall. Faye, quickly short after. Man, that was how quickly Gale Force can just press all their heroics, get the kills, and now that is three, four members going down. Iacona had to walk into Frozen Tempest to try to hit that Ancestral, and it was at the same time as Avatar 2, so using both of those on the target meant that it wasn't there for somebody like Gul'dan who needed to be able to get out. There was no way to run away once all of the members of Superstars there were committed, and they took so much damage at the beginning of the fight that although Superstars found a moment, they found an opening, we thought maybe they could come back in the game. Gale Force Esports just turns around and will quickly win a team fight to give them the win in game three, taking out Superstars three to zero. Can respect Goku's efforts at the very end. You know, fighting the good fight, the man versus the core. But in the end, Gale Force here stick into their original strategies they displayed in week number one, and they pay off here in week two versus Superstars. Not as clean as maybe week one, you know, maybe not as refined, but still having that innovation that what I'm calling now the Gale Force flavor on the drafts and play style this week. Yeah, I mean, you do have to give it to Superstars too versus teammate. Superstars had a whole week to look at those strategies, the double warrior, double support, and the Braxis holdout signature style of Gale Force Esports and try to develop the answers. 
They just weren't the ones to do it. Who will? Who will? That's my question. I, I don't know at this point. With Gale Force Esports looking like a new beast, it's there's very few teams in the North American scene that I really feel like can take Gale Force when they're truly at their best. And right now, I think they're closely, like, quickly filling the like gap on their ability to improve and be one of the best teams in North America. Yeah, and I do have to say that I think a lot of that comes down to solidifying roles a yeah. lot more for yes. them. They have Equinox now playing Warrior, and there's no longer that, oh, who's going to play Warrior this time? Who ends up potentially being on somebody they don't feel comfortable with? It is a whole different Gale Force. Yeah. And I, I'm happy for them for that. I, I agree. I think it was a, the first step they needed to make, and I'm glad they identified it, and it looks like they're they're following through with it because we've seen teams time and time again be like, no, nah, we figured it out. We're just going to put this guy on this role, and we'll swap him, and that'll be fine. Two weeks after that, they are just like, ah, uh, you know, because you look for the immediate result. Oftentimes, team do. It's not about the long game. It's more about what's going to win me this week versus six months from now, can I be the best? And being able to keep their strategies going for Gale Force Esports ensures that they don't show anything too new. Because remember, they haven't played Tempo Storm yet. And we know that uh, Michael Udall just tweeted that he'll shave his head if they lose that match. So I want to make sure that everyone holds him to that if they do end up losing it. But that's not going to be this weekend. Meanwhile, let's check in with Crowen. Hey, buddy, congratulations. How are you guys feeling? Did you feel like it would be a 3-0 over Superstars this week? Uh, we were feeling pretty confident because we had a lot of prep this week. Didn't know it was going to be a 3-0, but I'm very proud of my team because we played really well. Shout out to Superstars. They're a good team. But, yeah. Let's talk about game two. You guys ended up playing versus Sray's um, Sylvanas versus your comp. We did. Were you guys expecting that? What, did, what was the thought process once you guys saw that pick? Uh, honestly, we weren't expecting that. I think that it's a viable, I guess, strategy to try to counter that because I guess if they watched last week, they would have known we ran um, that comp and we just kind of split push and we used the Zagara to push and they were trying to match that. But it didn't end up working as I guess they expected. So I wonder if they really researched enough and tried that out. But it was an interesting strategy. But yeah, props to them. They tried to counter it, but unfortunately it didn't work for them. Good. You guys have obviously made some pretty big changes between part one and part two. I just wanted to hear from maybe your perspective, uh, now pulling away from the warrior and kind of focusing a bit more onto your backline role. Like, what feels different for you, you know, between week one and or part one and part two? Because obviously, it feels like Gale Force Esports is a completely different squad. Yeah. So actually, it's really interesting because I was actually on. ET ETC was my most played here on par one. I had like eight games ETC and it was like a 75% win ratio. And my Li Ming was seven games and it had a worse win ratio than my ETC. So it's kind of funny and like it worked out for um, us a little bit, but it was really inconsistent because we didn't really find our groove all like all the time with that with that um, sort of four flexes and a support sort of style. So while it was really good sometimes, sometimes we did struggle as we saw in Katowice for that tournament. And so after that we talked and we decided we you should switch things up again and have Equinox on that main tank role because having one consistent player in that role is really something that we thought would help us and it's been working out so far and I think I enjoy it um, being on what ranged more like tank I thought was you know it was pretty fun for a while I had my good times um, on ETC but I'm ready to uh, you know take back that range role <laughs> get back to it especially yeah. the leaming we miss your leaming um, well, maybe I'll get to play it sometime. Ooh, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> My question for you guys is about your preparation. We know how much you guys' preparation means for you. What is it like um, in a week like this where you have two different opponents because you guys are playing No Tomorrow on Sunday? Do you feel like your preparation suffers? And what can we expect from that matchup versus No Tomorrow? Um, I think obviously, you know, say if you have a week where you only have one match or a week versus two, you have to do double the prep work. And so it's a lot harder because sometimes maybe you might focus on one too much. But I think our team did a good job of um, allotting time to prepare for both. And I think we can see tomorrow. Um, I wonder how no tomorrow is going to perform because they have been kind of inconsistent. Through the through this whole season, so I think we're just we're pretty prepared against them. I don't want to say exactly what we're looking to do, but um, just be prepared for a good set. Awesome. Well, good luck in that set for you guys tomorrow versus no tomorrow. And uh, before we let you go, do you have any shout-outs? 
Yeah, of course. First of all, thank you to everyone watching. Thank you for you for casting, doing such an amazing job. This is, you know, this is a dream come true for me to be able to do this. And so I just want to express my appreciation for everybody. Um, also, a shout outs to uh, our sponsors, Gunners and Twitch. Shout outs to my team. Uh, they all stream, well, besides Akaface. But I'll give Aka a special Twitter shout out at Akaface Hots. Uh, I stream at twitch.tv slash Crowen. Michael is just Michael Udall. Fan is SC2 Fan TV. And Equinox is Equinox Hots. And yeah, much love. Thank you very much. Thanks, Crowen. He you, nailed you the, the Twitch. Yeah. I was keeping track. I was keeping <laughs> the eyes going down. Yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, I do actually have some shout outs. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be Fan SC2 TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're moving on to Michael. Michael, did we remember Michael? I don't know. Mm. I think we did. Well, hey, it was worked out more for him than Mike Udall, at, at least. P poor <laughs> Michael was struggling trying to remember fans' Twitch. Well, that does it. Very quick 3-0 in our first series. Yeah. We're not done yet, though. We're going to have B-Step versus Team Freedom. Any thoughts on that matchup before we head to a break? I, You know, I think it'll be a bit closer than this first series, but it's... I don't know how I feel. Who's going to pull ahead? I don't give either team too big of a favor. I think it's just going to be a scrap at the mid part of North America. All right. Wise words from Dread about how our next matchup will go. We're taking a break. We'll see you after it. Bye. Scobos is the home to the reclusive Ascari and their Amazon warriors. Long ago, their oracles predicted the dark exile of the prime evils and foresaw an Amazon would someday rise to fight them. Alongside a group of valiant heroes, Cassia defeated Diablo and his brothers and returned home after the World Stone's destruction. Now the war matron and commander of the Amazon army, Cassia brings